Welcome. Today we're going to share our expert techniques for securing IV access in patients with long-standing diabetes. We will explain why diabetic veins are difficult to access and show you our practical strategies straight from our Nysora's IV manual. Then we will recap the key points so you can easily remember them and recall them in your clinical practice. In this video, we'll focus on a 55-year-old patient scheduled for bilateral knee replacement surgery. Normally, two large-bore IV catheters are standard for this clinical scenario, but our patient's long-standing type 2 diabetes has rendered his veins fragile and torturous, making them prone to blowing up. But let's start by understanding why diabetic patients often have difficult IV access. High blood sugar levels over time lead to several important changes in the veins. Glycation, sugar molecules bind to proteins causing cross-linking. This process makes the veins less elastic and more fragile. Endothelial dysfunction. High glucose levels damage the inner lining of the veins, reducing nitric oxide production and making them harder for the veins to dilate. Chronic inflammation. Ongoing inflammation in diabetic patients further weakens the vein walls, making them sclerotic and less visible or palpable. These combined effects results in veins that are fragile, sclerotic, and less easily detectable. This is why diabetic patients often require specialized IV techniques, extra expertise, or ultrasound for cannulation. Let's take a look at some tips from our IV manual in action. Tip number one, apply the tourniquet and wait long enough to allow the veins to fill. Patience is the key. Rushing can compromise the already delicate veins. Tip number two, avoid torturous, thin-walled veins, especially those near the elbow, as they can easily kink. Instead, look for straight veins with few tributaries that help anchor the vein during the cannulation. Tip number three, use the appropriate catheter length. Don't use overly long catheters that can get caught on valves or smaller tributaries. Reserve long catheters for deeper veins or ultrasound-guided access. But now let's watch a short clinical video that demonstrates these strategies in real time. With a difficult IV access, we can see how difficult and fragile veins they are. They easily burst right there because they have very fragile walls. There's a large IV over here. But let's see what we can get. So we're going to apply a tourniquet here. And then we're going to wait sufficient time for the veins to pop up. Okay, and just make sure that you actually explore all the options. This vein over here is stabilized, but unfortunately it has very thin walls. You can see how fragile it is, and this would not be a good choice. Besides the vein, also has a torturous course. It wants to go to the left, so it doesn't have a straight path. So we're gonna look what else we have. So there's one vein over here. We can clearly see it. And that would be a good choice for intravenous cannulation. Unfortunately, the veins in the antecubital area are not the best choice because when you bend, when the patient bends the arm, obviously the catheter tends to kink. Uh, these are additional options, but again, this is very torturous veins. And these are really difficult actually to place the catheter and maintain them. Here we are lucky. Here we can see the vein that is fairly straight and it has a tributaries which makes it stabilize. If we tap on it, I think this would be a really good choice for her for intravenous access. I'm going to bend the catheter slightly so we have the leverage. I'm going to stabilize the veins first underneath the skin and then lift the angle up and enter the vein. There we go. I can advance this further a bit more and then feed the catheter inside. So here we have one IV axis that is workable. Okay, we're going to take a winged catheter. Okay, so again, I'm going to bend the needle slightly, the catheter, so I have opportunity to, to leverage it. I can feel the vein, but it's not an easy one to cannulate, so we'll give it a quick try. Very low angle. Okay, so we have a flashback. We're going to try to feed it. And there you go, we got lucky. So we have a very good IV access now, both distally 
and proximally. All right, let's quickly recap what we have covered today. Number one, understand the challenge. Diabetic patients have fragile veins due to glycation, endothelial dysfunction, and chronic inflammation. Number two, key strategies. Apply the tourniquet patiently to allow veins to fill. Avoid torturous, thin-walled veins and target straighter veins with tributaries. And choose the appropriate catheter length, reserving longer ones for deeper or ultrasound-guided access. Our approach? These strategies are detailed in Nysora's IV manual, a great resource for your clinical toolkit and an amazing gift for your hardworking nurses. And that wraps up our video on securing IV access in patients with long-standing diabetes. If you found these tips useful, please like and subscribe to our channel for more practical insights. Until next time, stay safe and keep innovating in your practice.